Nothing much. How are you doing? I'm chilling. How are you? I only talked to you like three times this week. I know. Because you know why? I was busy. Clearly. How was your week? My week was um, good. Okay. It was a little bit busy. Again. You know, I mean, it's life. I'm, I'm trying to get into the, like, that's life. And some days you're going to be busy. You know, I don't like that. But here we are. Remember last week I told you that I was going to go see Damon Wayans and Jasmine Sullivan? Yes. So went to go do that. And I'm still tired. I'm just telling you this. <laughs> when you get a certain age, I never really thought about <laughs> how life changes when you get a certain age. Because to mm-hmm. me, for whatever reason, I'm still like, wow, you in your um, early 40s, huh? It's, it's crazy. You, I feel like I just graduated from high school yesterday. However, I my body and that recovery time from going outside does not feel like I graduated from high school yesterday. Mm. I went out two days in a row and I need a week to recover. I am still tired from this weekend. All right. But was it worth it? How were the shows? It was so good. Damon Wayans, let's start with that. Damon Wayans was hilarious. I mean, yeah, he's funny. Hilarious. He was, I just first time I ever seen him in stand up. And I mean, I, you know, the Wayans family. And then Damon, right. you think about him living color, homie the clown, my wife and kids, you knew it was going to be funny. But right. it was like gut busting, ha ha ha, from the beginning, from the beginning to the end. I actually didn't see the total end of the show. We left before okay. he got finished because Washington, D.C. sucks for parking. Okay. And we parked in a parking lot. They said they closed at midnight. Now, I'd have had my car stuck in a parking lot before. So okay. I didn't want to go through that. So I was like, we have to leave because I have to get my car. Like, you know, I'd be wanting to be home. Right. I, I, don't, I don't play that. I need my car. I want to go home at the end of the night. So we left. You know, he had like a, he was closing out, mm-hmm. but um, hilarious. Okay. The people that he had before him, they were terrible. And I mean, when I say terrible, I mean, no, even like <laughs> none of that. It was just like. Were they known people? Were they locals? Like, you don't know. Who I they hope were. they were locals. They definitely weren't known people. I've never seen them before. And I'll go to comedy shows all the time. Um, I hope that they were locals, meaning that he just was like, oh, I'm in Washington, D.C. Come on up, you know, do your little spill. And, right. and that's that. I hope they're not touring with him because if they're touring with him, he needs to go back to the drawing board. When I tell you terrible, I mean terrible. Mm. Terrible. But he, funny. And then the next yeah. night, went to go see Jasmine Sullivan. You know how I feel about Jasmine Sullivan. It's my girl. When I tell you she tore it down. The girl is, I always say this about Jasmine Sullivan because I've been watching her for so long, even when right. she was like a kid. You know what right. I'm saying? She's a local girl from Philly. Um, and so you watch videos of her when she was younger singing. That girl's voice is anointed. Right. Like you talk about she has a voice. She, she has a voice. She definitely has a voice. She ha- yeah. she that is a gift. Mm-hmm. That voice is a gift. And she didn't disappoint. When I when I tell you that it was like pick up your feelings, put them somewhere, don't bring them back here. She sang down. You felt yes. every note. It was great. And that's something else that I really like about Jasmine Sullivan, even though, um, you know, is she's a home girl. So mm-hmm. she sings in a way how we relate, how we talk. Yes. Exactly what we're thinking. Like exactly, exactly how we're thinking it. And, yes. and that's like what the name is off the Yes. Yes. So come pick up your keys. I don't want yes. none to yes. And I'll bust the windows out your car. Right, you right. Know, right. And don't forget your feelings, boo. Don't forget your right. feelings. <laughs> yes. It was great. The only downside of the weekend 
was the vid. The vid still out there. I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't know if they know it, but it's still out there. But when I tell you we was packed like sardines, we was packed up, honey. Packed up. It was to capacity. Long are the days of, um, you know, social distancing, anything like that. It was packed up. And I was in there packed with them. Well, last week you said that was one of the lures that, you know, it was a smaller venue, so it would be more intimate, whatever. Yeah, but... it was intimate. All right. It was intimately with your neighbor. <laughs> it was intimate. It was like, hey, oh, yeah, you're breathing on me. You're singing loud, huh? Oh, okay, we out here. Yeah, oh, it's just how it was. Even in the um, comedy show, the comedy clubs packed to capacity. But all in all, I didn't even think about it. I just went out there. I had a good time. It was a good weekend. I'm tired as hell. Um, hopefully next week I will regain some energy because this week is looking on the low low. Mm. Um, but yes, worth it to answer your question. So how was your week? I do not have a word or words to describe my week. Oh, this week was like fantabulous. Oh, it was just like, it was that um, good and I didn't talk to you, so you didn't call me to tell me about your week? You know, I did talk to you about what made my week fantabulous. Um, oh, what was that? So, t- oh my. you know, I don't remember what I did yesterday. So, <laughs> that is terrible. Um, that, is terrible. that is terrible. But um, I think that when you have been desiring something and wrestling with something and praying about something for years and years and years mm-hmm. and years and it just doesn't seem that you're go- you're like stuck in this thing and you're trying to move past it and you're trying to grow and you're trying to let go and you're trying to do all of these things but this thing this this thing is still there and you keep praying and praying and praying and praying and hoping and praying and hoping and praying. And then one day, clear out the blue. It happens. Now (laughs) I know why your week was fabulous. Okay. You brought me back. You brought me back. And I feel a thousand pounds lighter. I feel in light. I, I I don't know how I feel. I really can't describe how I feel, but I'm very, very happy. I'm very happy and I am excited to move on. I'm excited about the next steps. I'm excited about where this is going. And I may even share it one day, but I'm just so excited. I was going to say, do you want to share what it is or you just want to just let the people know that it was a, like, you know. It really was, it was really a breakthrough. It just really was a big, big breakthrough. And I don't know if I'm in a position to share right now, but I will say this. I will say this. Everything is in God's timing Mm -hmm. and he does not uh, do things the way we think things should be done. What would you say? I need them to get got right now. Right. (laughs) You know, but it is not even about revenge or anything like that. It's just that you it's just been plaguing me for so long, Mm -hmm. you know, and finally. um, Even when I tried to fix it on my own and nothing was working, finally, I think that a real healing process can begin and i'm very 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 happy so that made my millennium really it made my millennium. okay it really i'm very happy for you um and i know that you're not in a position to share exactly what it is but to know that you had a big breakthrough and um that you feel good about you know the position that you are in in life right now at this moment because of that and that's big for you yes that's better than progress. No, oh, okay. I mean, it is progress, but it's like even it's like <laughs> progress, etc. <cetera>. Right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was great. Good, good for you. <laughs> so, what's going on? Who did some shit, girl? You know, it's always a bunch of stuff going on. I wanted to talk about this one thing um, specific to the time right now. Uh, did you hear about the twenty-one-year-old girl in Pennsylvania? that um, killed the three people, two state troopers and a pedestrian. Did you hear about that? I heard about that. 
So just a little background of it. Um, Jayana Tanea Tanea Webb of Eagleville, Pennsylvania. Um, She was charged with three counts of third degree murder, homicide by vehicle, and a battery of DUI related charges in her role in the three uh, deaths. And like I said, two state troopers and one pedestrian. So uh, what happened was she was driving drunk, 21 years old driving drunk she was stopped by the two state troopers who she eventually murdered um for suspicion of drunk driving they pulled her over you know i guess they were you know going through the rigmarole what was going on and in that time they got a call that it was a pedestrian walking down i-95 and for those of you that don't know i-95 I-95 in Pennsylvania is a major highway. Um, and Not just in Pennsylvania. It goes all the way from Florida up to Maine. It's a major corridor. Uh, well, yes. Yeah, so it was a pedestrian walking. They got the emergency call. They let Jayana go and they let her go. They were down there taking care of the other person, I guess, trying to figure out why they were walking on the side of the highway. And the same girl who they pulled over for suspicions of drunk driving ultimately murdered them, crashing into the state troopers and the pedestrian. And, you know, the situation is just terrible all the way around. It's just a terrible situation. You know, this girl is 21 years old, just turned 21. She, her life, is over. I want to say her life is over because you know like you're still in the land of the living so your life is over in the sense of like what do you have to now accomplish you are going to jail prison you know that they're going to make an example out of this girl you know and usually I can be sympathetic to situations and I can look at you know another side of it but this situation I can't look at the other side of it this girl murdered these people. I just can't look at the other side of it. And I know that you want to say, you're going to say whatever it is that you're going to say. We're not going to agree all the way around on the situation. I don't care if the state troopers pulled her over and that they didn't do their quote unquote job by letting her go. For whatever reason, they did, they let her go. I, I, I We don't know what the reason is, but I can't say it's not- their fault. No, it's not their fault. Yes, it's their fault. It's not their I'm fault. Sorry. It's not your fault that you get murdered. I'm sorry, it's not. And it's not your fault that regardless of whether or not they were the cops and they were uh, designed, I mean, they were supposed to be doing a job and they let her go. For whatever reason, they let her go. But did letting her go, did they deserve to get murdered in I didn't say in they the process of letting murdered. her go? I didn't say I they deserved. thing is, is this. Everything is personal. You know, things come personal. My uncle was killed by a drunk driver. You know, your cousin. So, to me... I know who he is. Yeah. See, I just want to remind you. <laughs> you know, but so my uncle was killed by a drunk driver. And did the drunk driver die? No, the drunk no, driver did never die. Do. They never so We lost our family because of a mistake that you made. And in today's time, especially, my uncle died in 1985. It is 2022. There are so many ride shares. I don't care what those cops didn't do. You should have never got behind the wheel drunk. And another thing is, is that the little girl, she kept getting drunk. It's and driving. It's coming all out. Right two days before she murdered these people, she tweeted out, I'm the best drunk driver that you ever seen. Uh, what it, was it, 30 minutes, minutes before she right. even killed the people? She tweeted out, just got pulled over, was doing, they said I was doing 110 and a 50. 110 and a 50. It's no sympathy for anything like that. Regardless of the situation that the cop shouldn't have let her go, there is no sympathy. You could have pulled, you could have stayed pulled over, you could have sobered yourself up. It was you could have not got behind the wheel, you could have called the Uber, you could have did any of those things, but you chose to continue to drive drunk, and then now you didn't murder three people. You're first all, Maya, you looking for first of all, let me start here. I hate drunk drivers. I literally hate drunk drivers. They cause more death, more hurt, more harm on the road than anybody. I really 
do not like drunk drive, drunk driving, buzz driving, anything. It is dangerous. And, and it's a like you said, And just like you said, they are never the ones to get hurt. They Ever. always come out unscathed. You yeah, know? she ain't so got always here. come out unscathed. And as and so I do not, I do not like drunk drivers. But you are, keep saying that they have a choice. And when they someone is intoxicated, no, because it's just the same thing where, you know, and people do things, bad things, under the influence of drugs and alcohol. And I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that you, the people are not in their right mind at the time. They're not, so she can't, you can't expect someone who's all drunk or high or whatever to sit there and be like, oh, you know what? Maybe I should sober up because she thinks that she's the best drunk driver. Mm -hmm. However, she was pulled over on the side of the road by two police officers who, and she was drunk. They pulled her over because they suspected drunk driving. Right. And they both left her. They both left her, didn't run because they got a call about a pedestrian. So you was close. Somebody else could go see about that pedestrian. One person could stay with that car until somebody else came. So you now they are to blame for their own death. I'm not blaming death. them. I'm not blaming That's what it them. Sounds like. They were the ones that weren't drunk. They were the ones who were trained to protect and serve. They were the ones that know the law and is paid to enforce the law. They were the ones that had her that could have stopped any harm that she could have done that night by arresting her. And that person would have still been walking on 95. And you know what would have happened if they would have arrested her? We sure don't know what happened. We don't know, know what would have yes, happened. We do because know. what because happened was they let her go we and know. she ended up we killing the people. So we can't assume what will happen. All we know is what did happen. And it would not have happened had she got arrested. We know that because she would have been in jail. No, because first of all, all she got twenty seven thousand tweets, and every and and twenty seven thousand of them. She would have been in jail. I know two state troopers. It's eight o'clock in the morning. I'm drunk. Go ahead. She's an alcoholic. Okay, she's twenty one. First of all, she's twenty one and alcoholic, so you know she's been drinking well before she turned twenty one. That's one thing, but you can't expect. Like they were the ones who were not drunk. They were the ones who were being paid to protect and serve. They were the rational people at the scene. And you don't just let a drunk driver go. You just so don't. You do that. feel like if those say if this same scenario would have happened and those people wouldn't have been police officers, then you would have had the same thought process. You don't. You don't have. You have that thought process because they were police and that they were they, supposed to be. Over. I mean, let have, me talk. Let me finish. Have, that, yes, they, they were police officers and they had already pulled her over. I'm not saying that she may not have killed someone. But that's she that's not what I'm saying. That's that's not what I'm saying. Was saying for her, pulled, for her. They had pulled her over that same night. That same night, just 20 minutes, 30 minutes prior. They okay, had her. So again. they were arrested, let somebody else take care of that pedestrian and arrested this woman, got her off the road. And, and more people would have been saved. Okay, so again. And they were the rational ones. They weren't drunk. Okay, so again, if they weren't police officers, but they was just Joe Smoles that was on the highway that night and they weren't police officers and it was the pedestrian and two other pedestrians and then the same thing would have happened but she wouldn't have been pulled over she would have just been driving down the road and then and so it's, it would have been the same you would have had the same thought process what if there is no that is two different scenarios it's she not, was pulled over yes it really. is no, she was not. pulled over okay you so let me, her. okay so stopped. let me so if you drunk, are you gonna let me talk? If you're drunk and somebody stops you, if just say if you're at a bar, if you're at a bar and a I, bartender I takes the nothing. keys, and a bartender takes your keys and does not allow you to drive home, there's less harm that you could do because you can't drive home. Now, if, if not you if you're drunk, because you're gonna be at the bar again next week and your ass is gonna have your keys. Right, and if he takes, well, I, what I'm saying is she may have hurt somebody eventually. No, but she that wouldn't. Night, that we don't know that, but what yeah, I'm saying, you know, that I'm, was, I'm that, talking about that, on that very that, night, that was, on that, that was, very that night, was right. two rational police officers pulled her over for the suspicion of drunk driving, and they and she was drunk and she was doing 60 miles over the speed limit, and they let her go. And your point is what? And my point is, if they would have arrested her, mm -hmm. this may not have happened. 
first of all, that was in their divine uh, uh, timing. They gave okay, okay, it. Okay, and it was they her. Okay, and it was, okay, it, was, it, was, it was obviously her. And, 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 and it's an unfortunate off. situation. They I want you to stop cutting me listen, off. Though. Because you, you're saying, you're comparing apples I'm not, and oranges. I, you know it's, it's not comparing not apples and oranges. It's not right. I'm not putting fault on anybody. They should have did their job. Point blank, period. So they, so they're at fault for dying. I'm not putting their fault job. on anyone. Well, 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 I'm well, saying that they were the police. They were rational. They were not drunk. They're hired to protect and serve. They had her pulled over to the side of the road where she could not hurt anyone. If they would have arrested her for drunk driving then and let somebody else worry about a pedestrian, less harm could have been done that night. That's it. That's all I'm saying. No. I That's it. I don't I, think listen, so. Please Again, listen. no matter, no matter what, no. You, no, because first of all, let me talk. Let me, let me. I mean, me. you can say what you want to let say. Let me say, but, what, can I? I mean, goddamn, can I say <laughs> what I'm going to say? Can I get it out or or you want to keep going? Oh my goodness. You want to keep faulting these people for dying? I'm not faulting what? them. I'm not faulting them. What I'm saying is if, if the process would have happened the way I feel the process should have happened, she was drunk. You get her out. You test her. You arrest her. Instead, you left her to Girl, her. If a dang on, if the animal control people came and got a damn animal out of your house, they came and got a rat out of your house or tried to get a rat out of your house, but they didn't catch said rats and their asses left because they've been there 20 hours doing their job, but then they left because they couldn't catch the rat and the rat was still in your house and then you went oh, yeah, to go sit on the couch and the rat jumped out and bit your ass, then is it the cop's fault because they That's, didn't catch that is the not rat? A that it's is not the a good same exact thing. It's, it's the same all. exact That's thing. What I'm saying at all. At the end of the day, if they would have put the girl in jail, because here's the thing: she was going regardless of whether she was going then or now, because obviously she was she was on the path of doing exactly what she. I agree. Doing. I so agree. I agree. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It could have been the same scenario. It could have been the same scenario if the cops would have. If the cops would have arrested her and then she got out of jail because she made bail and then she would have went home and got drunk again and then got back on the road. She killed somebody else. It wouldn't have just been John and Terry that got killed. It would have been James and Jimmy that got killed. It would have been the same thing. The girl was obviously down going down the path of where where her ass is right now. And to me, regardless of what you're saying, whether they let her go, people make mistakes all the time. Her and what she did, that wasn't a mistake. That was a choice. And I don't care. Uh, we could argue that all day. That was a choice. She chose to I, get behind I agree. The I agree. That was a choice. To, she chose to get behind the wheel. I agree. I agree. She chose, she chose not to sit there and get herself together. She chose to keep it on moving, whether she was rational or irrational. And now, yes, is going to suffer the consequences, which is she should do. And again, usually I can feel sympathy. I can't feel sympathy for her, especially when you are bragging about being drunk all the time. No. And I, you know, like I can feel, I know not personally, like I have an addiction, but I know what addiction is. I know how it can ravage you and I know how it can go, you know, and it can, it, it can be destructive. I know all of that. It doesn't, I still, I can't give her a pass on anything and I can't blame blame the police officers for the job that they did not do. I'm not giving her a pass yeah, and I'm not, and I'm not blaming pass. the police officers. What I'm saying is if this child and apparently this is not the, it would not have been, well, it's not because um, she has been charged now her first drunk driving offense. Right. It's not her first drunk driving offense. And, and most drunk drivers are habitual uh, drunk drivers. You lock them up, you suspend their license, you do all that stuff, and they still drive drunk. And I'm not saying that um, I'm not 
putting blame on the police officers. I'm not. But what I'm saying is that when you have two individuals and one is is rational and one is not like who do you have to lean on you have to make the rational choice you, yeah, you but have even to if you made the rational choice it could have still turned out the way that it turned no, out we'll never know we will never know will we right. they left her they left her to her own devices and let her drive off while they went to go get a pedestrian Oh, well, I guess it's your fault that you got murdered. Um, I'm not saying it's their fault. Again, we're we going to go back and forth. We're going to go back and forth with it, and we could go round and round, and, and, and we can both have arguments on the situation. I don't feel sorry for the little girl. I think that it's this a is not feel sorry. It's I don't feel it's, sorry. I don't feel like the officers could have done anything different to spare their lives. I feel like it was obviously their time to go, and it was obviously her time to be exactly where she is. So, what else do we have? <laughs> Cause I'm getting, I, I, I you know, and again, no, I, I, no, I am because it's a personal thing. It's like saying, you know, if my uncle, if he got, if his drunk dr driver got pulled over by some police and they let him go, and then he killed my uncle, I'm not going now and look at the police and be like, oh, you should have arrested him. No, at the end of the day. You shouldn't have been behind the wheel drinking. That is absolutely true. But if he got pulled over, he certainly should have been arrested for DUI and not let to be going back on the road. Well, that drunk driver didn't. That's why pulled. they call it, what do they call it? The tank or something where they sit and sober up? Even if they don't, don't go know. to jail for it, they, people I get arrested for drunk drinking. driving. They go to a they go to the police station or wherever. They sit in a tank until they sober up and they get a court date. Like yeah, they don't let what, them go back on the road. Janiyah, if Janiyah would have went in a tank and sobered up, her tweet showed that she would have came right back out and drank. So she, she would have killed have. somebody. She, she, she probably would have, but yeah. we'll never know, will we? Because she we do know, we do know. She we don't, we don't, we don't know because she 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 didn't get arrested. She didn't sober up. Next, I, that's fine. People make choices. That's fine too. Yeah. And now you gotta live. Don't with drink your, and drive. With, yeah. Now you gotta live with your decisions and your choices for, for a very long time life. in prison. Right. So yeah. And all her pictures, all her tweets, she like, eh, 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 drink drink in. Ah, ah. and now all these pictures, she just head down crying and everything. But I mean, such is life. I just still feel like she should have been arrested. Okay, That's what else do we have? <laughs> her honor, Katanji Brown Jackson. Right. Um, I saw a video of her best friend reading a character statement. Well, who is Katanji? Brown Jackson. He is Joe Biden's nomination for the Supreme Court. Okay. Her honor. Yes. She, um, I saw a video of her best friend reading a character statement. Okay. And I just want to say that I need you and my best friend to like get some statements together because I really felt like, oh, that's my girl. You Good. know, she really read. Um, her experiences, they met in college, um, always stayed together, saying how she was the go-to person for everything. She always helped people. And it was so uh, personable and real. I really enjoyed it mostly because all of the, like, you know, I've been listening to some of the lines of questioning and all this other kind of stuff that they're doing. They're just really trying to berate this woman and talking about, um, oh, you know, she's articulate like she shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that. So it was something really refreshing to hear. And I just, um, yeah, I need you and my best friend to work on some things about me. I'll do the same for y'all, you know, so that when the time comes, I mean, you know, it's going to be profound. It's, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, Maya. Yeah, okay. You know? So, um, but the things that she's been, um, questioned about, uh, the one thing <laughs> was, um, can you define woman? <laughs> it's always the people who can't define said thing that are asking you to define uh, the thing. And it's always the people who can't do what it is that you can do that are um, making you try to prove who you are. At the end of the day, um, Katanji is more qualified. She has yes. more experience, more trial experience than all of the Supreme Court justice sitting as she informed 
the Senate. Yes. Um, it really bothers me. I'm happy for her. You know, I mean, let, let's just put that on the table. I'm, I'm very happy. Oh, for she's her. handling it well. Yeah, of course, because we don't have a choice. You right. know, we, we don't have a choice but to sit and grin uh, and bear all of uh, the berating that's going on. And we don't have a choice but to prove that we are better. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have the luxury of not going through anything, you know, and especially in situations like this. Her record speaks for itself. What it is that she has accomplished, you know, the education, um, working her way up to uh, being a judge and working her way up to even being nominated for the Supreme Court. It, again, it speaks for itself. But mm -hmm. and they know that, you know, they do. Um, they do. They know that. It, and 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 but just to have to witness her going through all that she has to go through and then yes. sitting and just uh, informing them like, no, mm -mm, I'm supposed to be here. Thank you. Um, I'm smarter than all of you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I just I'm sitting there and every time I'm looking at it, I'm like, baby, it couldn't be me. That couldn't be me. Politics could not be me because it's no way on the earth that I could sit there and let someone who hasn't accomplished half of what I've accomplished in my life have me try to explain my accomplishments to them. Like, that doesn't even make sense. It, it doesn't it, even have to be. You, you see how we just interacted that it couldn't be me because, I, you know. It just is it, but but I am happy. Um, what I will, what I wanted to say though, in regards to Katanji, is is this: as Black people, are we happy? Never. With, with what is going on? Never. I, no one is more pro-Black than me. You know, I am waving the pro-Black flag. You know, and I don't make any apologies for it. Um, I'll tell anybody who listen how great of a people that we are. However, you know, what is it that we want? You know, I think that we have to be a little bit more realistic in the world that we live in, especially America. Unfortunately, we are not going to um, have the luxury of the benefit of the, of the doubt. We're not going to have the luxury of um, saying how great we are. We're not going to have the luxury of not having to jump through hoops like a circus uh, a clown, not saying that we're clowns, but you know what I mean, to prove anything to anybody else. We don't have that luxury. Uh, we know the world that we live in. We know the things that we have to do and, and how we have to work twice as hard. Is it fair? No, it's not fair. But it's the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. And I say all of that to say, do we want to see at the table or don't we? You know, when Kamala Harris was becoming the nominee for the vice president of the United States, it was, ah, she don't do enough for black people. You know, when Barack Obama was the president of the United States, it was, ah, uh, what he done for us? You know, and now we have Katanji and she is the nominee for the Supreme Court Justice, she's probably going to be the Supreme Court Justice. And it's like, oh, uh, yeah, she's just a token. What, what do we want? You know, like we can't, unfortunately, you know, we can strive to have, we can strive to have all the things that we want. But unfortunately, we might not never get there. You know, um, look how far we've come, right? That's not to say, like, take anything that they give us. That's not to say, like, the crumbs that they give us, we should be happy with. But it is to say, what do we want? Do we want a seat at the table? If we want a seat at the table, we got one. We're getting one. Right. So now what? You know what I mean? Pull somebody up to get another one. That's that's just how, that's just what I'll say. It's like when I see people putting her down or, you know, saying things about her record or, just anything. It's like, I just want to just scream out, shut the mm, up. <laughs> it's like, you know what I'm saying? And again, that I'm not happy yes. with everything that they, that they do. And right. I'm not saying that we should be happy with everything that they do. However, everything, no matter what it is, has to start somewhere. Right. We're at the somewhere start. 
And then we're just going to keep climbing and keep chipping and keep whatever to try to get something else. Because at the end of the day, it has to be representation. That's what it is. It has to be someone with a seat at the table. That's what this is. Is it the is it the best that we could do? No. Should we have more? Yes. We all know that. But like, come on. But even on that same token, the people that have been presented are qualified. Right. You may not like all of their stance. You may not like or or believe in your top priority may not be their top priority, but they're qualified. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to agree on everything as evidenced by our first who did some shit. You don't Mm -hmm. have to agree with everything. But if (laughs) but the people are qualified. So there's no sense in arguing, belittling you know, backbiting and talking about someone who is qualified. You know, that's what uh, disturbs me about the whole scenario. Do we, first of all, I don't agree. Every, everybody's platforms don't align with mine. At all. They don't. Everybody's platforms don't align with mine, but it does not mean that a, they're not qualified. It does not mean that a B they may not, look at something that I think is important as important also, but they may think something else is more important or they may even be more involved with something. So they're able to affect more change in that area. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that's what, that's the part that I don't like. Don't berate people because these people are qualified. Katanji's right. qualified. Kamala's qualified. Barack Obama was qualified. They're qualified. Right. So, you know, and also, if you want more of us, then vote more of us in. And if you want more of us, then vote the people who are in there out because those same people keep getting seat after seat after seat after seat after seat. And you could just go out and what? Vote. vote. Yeah, in your local yeah. elections. And as for, for all of the people who say, oh, my vote doesn't matter. You know, when stuff like this comes up, it shows you that it does. Yes. What else do we have? Um, I just wanted to mention Dr. Malika Mitchell Stewart. She is the latest uh, African-American to file a lawsuit against uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have been this happened like right after the new year. And I'm always looking for some updates and I haven't seen anything since February. But Dr. Malika Mitchell Stewart um, is a physician and she signed with a, a practice and got a sign on bonus, a $16,000 sign on bonus check and went to Chase Bank because it was convenient. That's where she wanted to bank and she was going to deposit that check and open an account at Chase Bank. And they refused to take the check. They, were, mm-hmm. they said they weren't going to deposit the check. The check was a fraud, told her she can leave. She A manager never addressed her. Someone who said that they were the manager later found out that that person was not the manager. Um, was like, oh, well, I don't know. Where did this check come from? Now, they never tried to verify the check. They never tried to call the corporation that the check was drawn on. They never called the bank. The routing number, everything is right there because the bank can check and see if the funds are available. Or right. They did none of that. Just told her to leave and would not cash her check. Then when she came back and actually spoke to the manager, the manager said, you ready for this? Mm. We have the right to refuse anyone for any reason. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now this was in (laughs) Sugar Land, Texas, which is like a suburb of Houston. Okay. Um, And um, so it was on, I'm going to have to call, the Black Information Network or something, because I want to know, you know what's <laughs> going on. And and the reason why it piques my interest is, um, you know, Chase Bank, <laughs> we travel a lot, and Chase Bank has the best travel reward credit cards. Mm. And I had, and I will, I'm just going to say it, I've applied for their credit card, and I have good credit. Like, I don't know what you need to get a credit card with this bank, because... Uh, yeah, like they keep denying me. Yeah, that's I because mean, your name is the B. Uh, I was thinking that I wasn't gonna say it. I was thinking that. <laughs> I really was thinking that. And um, and it's mostly just because of the awards, like the flight awards and stuff like that. But I found a car that's like a little comparable. I'm lying. It's it's all right. <laughs> Because Chase Bank really has the best travel rewards, like if you use their cards to buy airline tickets and concert tickets and stuff like that. But um. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm I'm gonna have to let this go. 
you know, they don't want my business, clearly. Well, so, if I was not that the other banks do, that. but they certainly don't want my business and I'm not fit to give it to them. But I do want to keep up with this story. So to date, Chase has not made a statement about this particular case because now they're saying it's an ongoing investigation. But this happened in like January mm. and there's still no statement. Like, come on. And they're not going to put out a statement because they don't have to. The thing about it is, just like they said, we can refuse this any time from any person. And, you know, higher ups, they're obviously uh, on the same page as uh, quote unquote said manager, because if they're not coming out to, you know, it's just like we don't have to address you. Who do, who are you, black right. woman? Right. You know, like. The fact that you wouldn't take, you are a bank. You want people to deposit their money so that you can make money off of their money because that's what happens when we put our money in a bank. Right. Banks make money off of our money. We make nothing, you know, that point zero zero point one zero 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 point nothing interest right. that we get off of our $16,000 really means nothing. However, they on the other hand get a lot of, uh, a lot money of return, from yeah. that sixteen thousand dollars. So the fact that they would just uh, deny it at all, it speaks volumes to wh what it is that they care about, and obviously it's not the black dollar. And and this is not the first time with Chase Bank. Um, they have a little track record of you know black athletes opening up accounts um, and things like that. It's kind of like. Um, you know, and Kevin Hart now has the Chase, he has a contract because he has all the commercials now promoting Chase Bank's credit cards and, you know, stuff like that. And um, I guess they know him. They know his face. So he's in. Well, you know, um, that's that that's that that's that you're not the, you're not those black people. You're this kind of black people. So you're good. Right. Or, or, and, they, and they know like his face is popular. So you have athletes now, if you're not a first round draft pick, but you still make it to the NFL and you go into the bank to deposit your check and open up an account, they have turned many black athletes away, not just in Sugarland, Texas, but in other parts of the country. So this is a pattern that Chase Bank has. And, and that's why um, I'm interested that and they won't give you a credit card, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over. Now I'm it's over. like, no, I got to prove that you are doing the right <laughs> yeah, thing. Where I want to be anyway. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> JP Morgan is the same uh, people that was just caught with the tons and tons of cocaine on the boat, right? So JP Morgan, they ain't worried about your little sixteen thousand dollars. They out there being uh, millionaire drug dealers. Billionaire Absolutely. Dealers. And and they said um, talked about how they uh, also funded a lot of slavery back in the day, uh, things like that. So you know. Nothing is surprising. No, and nothing has changed. Exactly. Anyway, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, but that just, you know, we're talking about banks and stuff like that. And that just rolls us right into what we were talking about today. Because at my, the credit card that I do have, um, <laughs> I get 3% cash back at the grocery store. And I always, like, have to remember, like, okay, use this card. So whatever the bill is, I'll just go ahead and put it on the card. But I pay for my groceries with this card all the time. But I went to the supermarket and, you know, I'm already in the bring your own bag, you know, you get five cents at this particular supermarket when you bring your own bag. But I bring my own bags and stuff like that. And I had one bag. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. One bag. Everything I bought fit into one bag. One big bag. This one, mm -hmm. one bag. Seventy-eight dollars. And you probably had cheese in there. <laughs> that was it. Maybe eggs. What? I can't afford to eat. I'm like, like I understand inflation exists. Mm. I, you know, and these are things that because I go to the market, I, I get the same things. You know what I mean? Right. Like. $78? These same groceries two weeks ago was like $50. I was like, and the lady was looking at me like, you got enough? Like, that's right. like, <laughs> You want to put something back? At the $78. I'm like, this, and I just think inflation is ridiculous. And I think what bothers me more than anything is that um, and it's even crazy. That I'm going to say this because I wanted to be an advertising executive. That was my dream mm. when I was young. Um, but it's all rooted in propaganda. 
Mm. It, it's all rooted in propaganda and the, the way that they present things in the United States. Now, I'm not saying that we should not have inflation because the cost of things increase. But our rates of inflation and the excuses that they use and the stories that they try to feed us to justify what they do is absolute bullshit. Yeah. I'm sorry. Absolute bullshit. It is. And especially in today's times, you know, like you said, inflation is something that has to happen. You know, we're it's no it's not like we're strangers to it. But in the rate that it's going now, it is a wonder that anybody is making it. You know, I, I I often think about how they try to present and they say, oh, the middle class. There is no middle class It's rich and poor yeah. because most people that are in the quote unquote middle class are the working poor. Yeah. And specifically because of the rate of inflation, there's not going to be places for people to live because of inflation. There's not going to be food for people to eat. I think about people who are in food deserts, you know, and they already are suffering. And then when you tack on the rate of inflation to the point, like you said, Two weeks ago, those same groceries are fifty dollars. This week is seventy eight dollars. Or you know, I I thought I think about the time. This was recently. I get this specific thing. It was a dollar ninety nine. I'm like, oh, dollar ninety nine. Yeah, okay, you know, whatever. And for real, that's like pushing it. I'm like a dollar ninety nine, whatever. And what it is is the Fiji water, the 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 one point five liters. So I'm like a dollar ninety nine. All right, cool. Not mm. fancy. So. I went back to the grocery store. It was two twenty nine. I'm like, all right, two twenty. Because you know, like sometimes you you so used to getting your same stuff, you just pick it up and put it in the cart. You ain't even really paying attention, right? Get up to the register. They're like two twenty nine. I'm like, all right, dang, okay, cool. Literally a week later, and I'm not exaggerating. A week later, it was two seventy nine. So I'm like two seventy nine. Y'all wilding out. Still brought it. <laughs> two seventy nine. Still brought it. I was like. Damn, man, yeah, damn. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I used to buy six bottles. Now I only could buy three, right? The next week, and this is no exaggeration, it was $2.99. In, in the middle of the grocery store, I was like, y'all are crazy <laughs> up here in the middle of the aisle because I just couldn't even believe it, right? I'm a virgin. Now you didn't went from $1.99 to $2.99, a dollar in within, this is within a three week span. Yes. That is how high, that is the rate of inflation at this point. And I'm all for like things have to increase. I'm not all for it as far as my money is concerned. I'm all for it as far as like I understand that things increase, right? Um, but at the rate that we're going now, again, how are people going to be able to live? It, and I'm telling you, like with the fuel, it, this is what gets on my nerves about the, the fuel. People was like, oh, well, and, and, you know, historically, fuel prices have always fluctuated, but right. it's always been it's also very political. Mm -hmm. um, yes. you know, but in the United States, we manufacture we have a whole all of these places where we make the gasoline that we use, like 85, 90 percent of it is that refineries here in the United States. Mm -hmm. So whatever is going on in other countries. We don't have a supply and demand issue right now. People are still working from home. People are still not working. P P you know, like, what are you doing? Gas does not need to be over $4. We get less than 3% of our fuel from Russia. Mm. That does not create a supply and demand crisis. Right. It does not. And that's what I'm saying about the way that they present things. And we just believe everything. You know, like, oh, you know, this is going on. The issue is they are funding these wars. They are funding other things that they want to to happen and to go on. And so when funds are distributed other places, the things that we need suffer. Right. And, and that's that's really what ha I'm telling you. I'm really going to try to be a minimalist. I don't know how I'm going to do It's It's going to be a work in progress. But like this is crazy. Well, you're not going to have a choice. Even <laughs> At the end of the day, we're not going to have a choice. You know, I see like rents increasing everywhere, home costs increasing everywhere. Again, it is a wonder that people are able to to live, even like you said, with the gas. You have gas in California that is almost seven dollars. 
you know, literally almost seven dollars, six dollars and some odd cents that you have in California. Mm -hmm. I, the gas in, the, in in my own neighborhood, it was it went down recently, but it was damn near five dollars. I was like, well, goodness gracious, I guess I'm gonna be. I always talk about losing weight. <laughs> I always talk about losing weight and I ain't been able to do it. But if I start walking everywhere I need to go, um, yes. then, then if, if, if gas continues to be this high, then maybe I'll lose me a couple pounds. So maybe this gas might be onto something. I don't know. Just in general. And you know what gets on my nerves when I think about inflation? Social media will have you to believe that people are out here and they are living like high on the hog. And that speaks to the propaganda that you was talking yes. about. It has you thinking that everybody is doing so well in their life. And I think that there are people that are doing well, but the large majority of this country is not doing well in the way that social media will have you to believe. They have you believe in that everybody is making six figures. They living in this luxurious lifestyle and it's just not true. Majority of the Americans are living below the poverty line or still in poverty. Working poor is a thing like people are living paycheck to paycheck. And if the rates keep increasing in the way that they're increasing, like I was on this, um, a group that I'm on in like, you know, for the areas, so it's mm -hmm. like, you know, a group on Facebook and this girl got on the group because the group is really good for like, if you need to find out information, you need a lawyer, you need, you know, cause it's, it's specific to black people. So it's like, I'm looking for, you know, a black shoe store. I'm looking for black lawyers, whatever. Right. Got on there and she wanted advice because her rent had went up 10%, 10%. So she wanted advice on what it was that she should do. And you know that it was 378 comments and I went through a lot of the comments and the majority of the comments was like, <laughs> yeah, I had to because I wanted to know, you know, right. I've experienced, I've experienced increases like that in the area. So I wanted to know what, what, what are these people saying? Majority of the people in the comments was like, you probably gonna have to pay it. Right. Cause there's where you live want to be what it is you're right. probably going to move somewhere else and it's going to be the cost that they're telling you that you have to pay it's probably going to be that cost and it just stunned me it stunned me um that you know that was the advice that they would give her but like can just even thinking about that 10 percent in one year it's crazy that's why uh places um like the city of camden uh, mm -hmm. New York City, places like that, that have rent control where there's a, the law, the mandate states that a rent rent cannot go up more than um, the cost of living increase. So Camden whatever. Has rent control? I'm sorry? Camden has a rent control? Yes. Absolutely. You I've never benefited from you, it. You cannot increase the rent. If you're a renter, Mm -hmm. you can, uh, your landlord cannot increase the rent more than the cost of living. So if the cost of living is 2%, that's all your increase can be. Um, I'm yeah. out of here. I need to move back home. Right. <laughs> 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 but that's, that's the whole purpose of rent control for where yeah. people can't afford um, those increases. But um, other affluent places, towns, and, you know, a lot of people you know, may not feel like they're affluent, but they live in an affluent place. Yeah. Uh, they don't have those protections. They don't have those rent controls. So a landlord can charge what they want. Now, if you want to go well above market value, your property will probably sit vacant, mm -hmm. um, you know, until you come to your senses. However, you can charge what, what you want. Yeah. And people need a place to live. So the, in, the, at the end of the day, they're at mercy for, you know, paying those prices. And then you have situations like what you were talking about with Chase Bank. If Chase Bank is is, is uh, not getting, not cashing someone $16,000 check or depositing or what, you know, what have you, then they surely ain't, uh, st you ain't standing in line for them to be giving out mortgages. You know, exactly. a lot of people are still doing that. There's it's still redlining happening. It's still people that are being denied for mortgages. It's not like, you know, we're living this American dream that we can go and we could buy a house. So a lot of people are, I'm not saying you can't buy a house, but what mm -hmm. I'm saying is it's not an easy process as people would have you to believe, right. uh, especially for African-Americans. So I say that to say that a lot of people are at the mercy of 
these landlords and these raising uh, rent prices and the inflation that is happening. And, you know, we're at the mercy of them because where else are people going to go? Exactly. And so now we're learning that um, more households are larger now than they used to be because people have been staying with families. And I'm going to tell you, um, you know, real estate has long been a way to accumulate wealth in the United States and people buy properties and rent them out. But when COVID happened and they had uh, people who were, you know, I own 10 properties and I rent this property and I got evicted from my place because my 10 renters could not pay rent but I could not evict them. And now I'm sleeping in my car, but I own 10 properties. That scared me. I'm like, this is crazy. You know, um, it's really, it's really crazy, but it just speaks to um, our economy and the way that we're allowed to do business. And I I have a few friends that own some properties and they were telling me that um, a lot of their properties now are turning into rooming houses Mm -hmm. because people cannot afford to rent a single family home. Right. They just just can't afford it. And so if they rent by the room for single people, but where does that leave families? You're right. It leaves families together with other families to rent a property. And one family will present to rent the property and then other families moves in because, Mm -hmm. you know, we can't afford to live. And you're right. Social media paints a false picture. Everybody is, I'm catching flights, not feelings and right. all this other kind of stuff. And then you see these people uh, in bankruptcy courts and, um, mm-hmm. you know, oh, I'm staying with this one now and, you know, things like that. And so even in with, with the inflation, because this, I mean, I've been paying bills for a long time, but this is like the biggest jump that yeah. I've ever seen in my Few years of being on my own. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. This is a big jump. Rising. Yes. Yeah, I think that they. Um, I went to this real estate class not long ago, um, just trying to you know learn some new information. I you know we're at the point of our lives where we have to be putting our hands in a little bit of everything, you know, because. Mm-hmm jobs are scarce and yes. you know, jobs are phasing out and you know all that good stuff and that's a topic for another day but um in the class the man said the teacher you know he was saying that inflation is at either like seven or nine percent and continuously rising and i'm like wow yeah you know it's like Come on. It, it is it is extreme it especially is, when my cost of living raise was only three percent especially when i didn't get a cost of living uh raise wait did i get a cost of living raise? yes you did well it wasn't three <laughs> percent that's probably 10 it no it wasn't it <laughs> wasn't it, it i don't care if it was 20 you know that's a dollar in your paycheck yes but um we all are feeling the crunch yes um I think that we all need to uh, buckle down as much as we can when you can't even af- when you can't when you have to be in the grocery store, even as a person who makes a decent living, you know, for yourself, mm-hmm. even as a single person, when you have to be in a grocery store. And I don't mean for I don't mean for like luxury items like that. Fiji water I was talking about. That's like a luxury. You, I don't have to drink right. Fiji. You know, the water, I could put some ice in some tap and, and get it popping. But the point is, is that not for even items like that. I mean, for items like, damn, can I afford to buy bread this week? You know, when you have to get to the point where you have to be thinking about things like that, And I'm thinking about, like you said, families and stuff like that. We are in a lot of we're we're in a lot of trouble. I I don't and I don't know if it's going to slow down. I think that we're and, you know, I guess they give you they give you like a little break. You know, just like I said, the gas went down. They give you like a little break. But it. I mean, even the breaks to me is all even the breaks to me is all propaganda. And I just want and this is my uh, and I keep talking about the grocery store because that's something that everybody can relate to. You know, we all need groceries. We all need to eat. But yeah. somebody please riddle me this. And I am so serious. I need I've been asking this question and I really need an answer. What? A chicken has <laughs> two wings and two legs. A pack of chicken legs is like five to seven dollars. And then not now. A pack of chicken wings is like thirty dollars. 
dollars. A pack of chicken wings is definitely thirty dollars these like, days. They had I, I make it make sense. They have two it. wings <laughs> and two legs. I just I don't. I, I, I don't I, care if a chicken wing had twenty wings uh, and, and and twenty legs. A pack of chicken wings shouldn't be thirty dollars, right? Especially when two legs <laughs> <laughs> cost way less. Like what? <laughs> this is crazy. You can't even get the you can't like and if you get the wingettes, I'm gonna say don't get the party you, pack, baby. You, you really, really well in. You rich. If you can't even go, because sometimes some butchers, you go to the butchers, they'll say you can ask for flats only. They're not even doing that anymore. Yeah, you flats like, only is probably seventy-eight dollars. But they're not even separating it anymore because they said no, because I can't get rid of them, whatever, and they can't sell them for their thirty dollars a pound. But like I, because I, where I usually go, you can specify because i like the flats yeah and yeah. um but you you can't even do that now but i just don't understand why chicken wings cost so much more than chicken legs they chicken got two of each you know why because people like wings and they don't like legs that's why listen the supply and demand everything in this world is the supply and demand and that's what it is it's a supply and demand issue you can people don't really like legs so it's like you can sell them for less people like wings let's raise the price a little bit more and you know what is happening the rich is continuing to get rich and the poor are continuing to be poor you know yeah. the, everything as they say now this is one good thing that social media does say everything is raising except for the wages and that is the truth these jobs want you to come back to work so now you want me to spend gas, you want right. me to spend tools, you want me to have to buy lunch when people are getting their jobs done in the comfort of their own home. It just is the greed, you know, it's the greed. And like you said, it's the propaganda that people are continuing to push out there. But do before we get out of here, do you have anything that people can do um, in regards to the rising cost of things? Well, one, I, I think that it's, it's very important for us to, um, even if you don't make a change, if you don't make one single change, the one thing I do suggest is that you start learning about money and budget. And uh, like so, that's very personal. People don't like to talk about it, not even in marriages. People People don't even talk about money a lot with their spouse. So I think one of the most important things you can do is to start learning about money. And we didn't delve into it like we really could have um, because each situation is personal. So um, when I was young, this was, I, I don't know how long ago this book is so old, but uh, Susie Orman's book, Nine Steps to Financial Freedom, the book is over 25 years old. It's, it's very old, but I found that book in like a yard sale or something. And I just, it was a quarter. I picked it up and um, it was the first book I ever read about money. And it showed me like, Oh, money really has value. Or like, I know that you need money. I knew that you needed money to live and all that other kind of stuff, but it's very um, nine steps to financial freedom. I'm not trying to promote. And then there are other people who talk about money too, but I would suggest the first thing you need to do is start learning about money. Little, little, little things um, at a time. You don't have to do a whole lot at once. And then um, as you learn things, you will start applying uh, things. Now I've always had credit cards. I never really cared about which credit card, Visa, MasterCard, whichever one had money on it. That's the one I would use. But now I'm really into the rebates. You know, I'm really into the rebates. And if this one gives me like I know which ones I use at the gas station and which ones I use at the grocery store, because those rebate dollars start to add up in my statement, you know, yeah. and it says and, you know, sometimes I have like a nice little sum and I'm like, oh, OK, and I can I don't even have to, you know, it pays the bill itself. Yeah. So um, it does. It does help. Um you know, if you can afford, afford Fiji water, wonderful. Uh, I still drink Wegmans brand <laughs> myself. I drink Wegmans. You know, I'm lying. I'm lying because I'm sitting here with my waters right here, and I You're have. Right. Like, <laughs> I drink. I drink yeah. Wegmans water at, uh, as yeah. well. However, I, I I agree with you in the learning about money. I think yes. we are definitely at a time where we have a lot of resources, you know, yes. that thing that YouTube, you're holding every yes. single day is a resource, you know, utilize it for your good. You can take that phone and you can learn so much. And I think yes. that a lot of us, especially in our generation, you know, we weren't taught financial freedom. Right. And 
you know, your parents were really just trying to make it. They didn't to pay exactly. the they, was, exactly. they had no money to save. They didn't have exactly. time to teach you how to make money. They was worrying about going to work so that they can make sure that you had a roof over your head, clothes on your body, and food in your uh, stomach. Exactly. So now we are at a time where we can gain so much knowledge and that yeah. we can pass it down, right? So the generations to come, these kids that are coming up, they know so much more. They teaching us about uh, financial freedom. So yes, that is a good, that is a great tip uh, that we, that people can. Yeah. And another thing that I think that something that we can apply right away is to, uh, Maya and I both, we make to-do lists. And so when you have errands to run and things to purchase and stuff like that, start making a list because that way you don't overspend. Yeah. Um, you don't overspend. You don't run around getting things that you don't need. I remember I needed to go to the market, but I was hungry and the market is very close to my house. So I came home first mm-hmm. and ate something. And then I went to the market because I needed to go. But I you never want to go to the supermarket hungry. Oh. You buy everything. <laughs> That's when you're taking up Fiji water. You buy everything in there, but mm-hmm. um, just like little things. And um, I came across this woman on uh, YouTube. She saves like half of her salary for retirement because, well, you know, everybody keeps saying Social Security is going away and all this other kind of stuff. And, you know, what do you have saved for when you're not able to work? Um, so you do have to think about those things. My daughter is young in her career. And I told her, like, right now, first job, start saving for retirement because you have so much time now. You won't miss it, you know, but when you're ready to retire, you'll have something. So that's important. And yeah. don't take the money out. Yes, don't take the money out because it's so much that goes with it. People want their money now. It's like, uh, you for know, what? I need it now but you you know it does hurt you in the long run but as baby said i think that to-do lists are great and for people it's especially important for people who can't save you know there are people out there who can't afford to save a dollar like it sounds crazy because again social media have you thinking that everybody is out here you know they got 401ks and 403bs and this that and the third Mm -hmm. no it's a lot of people that are living paycheck to paycheck it's a lot of people whose paycheck don't uh ends don't meet you know to be able to do the stuff that they have to do so things like making a to-do list is important so that you can be strategic and how it is that you even spending your money you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um and that's for people like you know that can afford to save and people who can't afford to save just like strategically thinking about um how you can make your money uh stretch yes yes you got anything else Make your adult children pay rent. Yes. I don't care how little it is. Um, young people need to know that life costs money. Um, mm-hmm. My daughter recently got a speeding ticket. Mm-hmm. And when I, and I, she was like looking at me and I'm like, okay, you know, but when I explained to her the snowball effect, this is not, you got a speeding ticket and you're going to pay the fine and go on about your life. No. You know, these people are going to come after you. You're going to have points on your license. You're going to have to pay a surcharge for that. You have to pay, you have insurance points now. Your car insurance is going to be more expensive. It's going to stay on your record for 10 years. It's going to stay on your insurance record for three years. Like, And she's looking at me like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be responsible for what you do. Um, now, you know, she was like, oh, she, and she don't, I don't even think she realized that she was, you know, she was on a country road coming from work. It doesn't matter. Like you have to be aware. So I told her, you know, I told her, I was like, I don't know. You you may benefit from getting a lawyer so that you don't get the points. They can plea it out and everything or whatever. And um, but you're going to pay for it. Right. Oh, because that's the way they learn the lesson. That that's the way they learn the lesson. If, if they have to pay with their own money and, you know, all of that bailing out. And that's why they pay rent. And uh, I know you, you got to pay your rent. Yeah. <laughs> You know, because you need a place to live. Like, you, you're not going to live anywhere for free. Nowhere. Um, nowhere. Nowhere. You're not going to live anywhere for free. So I would, you know, you have to teach responsibility. And so those parents that say, oh, they just pay me a little bit and I just give it back to them when, da, da, da. No. Right. No, no, no. no, I have plans for all of, like, the money I get in my paycheck, I pay my bills with. The money I get from other sources, I have plans for all of that money. 
Right. Um, so, you know, my goal is to be debt free by my birthday. And I'm working on it very, very deal. I don't want to owe anybody, no cars, no mortgage, no student loan, nobody. Because that's yeah. really all I have. Um, but yeah, no, I have a plan for all of that. And I'm still going to live. Right. And yeah. I agree that you not only just to teach the responsibility, but because of what we've been talking about, the yes. cost of living is continuing to increase. One, you can't live anywhere for free. But also, I think that it is wonderful for your kids to be able to stay with you. When I moved out from living with my mother, I moved because I moved to another state uh, for a job. Had I not moved here for that job, I would have still been living with my mom. Right. I said, well, I'm going to live with my mom until I get married. And you see how that's working out. That's so, right. even, you know, I should have got married in college and I wouldn't have had to worry about it. That's another topic. <laughs> Um, so I was like, I could just continue to live with my mom, but I also wasn't oblivious to the fact that my mom had to pay bills. You know, I think that a lot of people get caught up when they live with someone else, children, or even if you just have to move in with a family member, right. they get caught up in they all like right. somebody asked you to go somewhere. What I got to give you gas money for? You already, you already it's had good. to uh, yeah, no. drive your car. <laughs> no, you know what happens when someone moves with you? All your bills double. Now and I got more light bill. I got more water bill. I have more of this. And people right. don't realize that, especially children. But when right. you become a certain age, no, I'm not kicking you out to the wolves. But you do have to contribute to the household That's because right. we are living in a time, unprecedented times, where inflation is rising mm -hmm. at a rapid rate, as we've been talking about. So you have to put in on what's going on up and around here. Right. And after you get a certain age, you should know what's going on right. up and around here. Right. And my daughter, um, and I'm just going to use her as an example because she's lived in other countries. Mm -hmm. So um, she's lived and, and done fine, you know, paid all. I don't send her money and all that kind of stuff. When she moves to other countries and works, she works it out, you know, herself. When she's home, she lives at home. But now she got her a dream job and she was like um you know oh and so she's looking forward to getting her own place and things like that and i said well adasia listen you can't move until you have you put a debt in your student loans a good debt um and your credit score needs to be 725 or higher mm -hmm. and she was like well mom you just want me to stay home no, no, I don't. no, actually, I don't. Your room is perfect <laughs> for for a dressing room. Perfect. Your right. room is perfect for a dressing room. No, that's not it. But I don't want you to have to struggle. Right. And I'm not saying that you have to stay home. What I'm saying is I'm allowing you to do this so that when you're out there, you don't have to struggle. Now, if you choose to go out there, it's not like you're moving to another country. You're not coming back. So if that's what you choose to do, I don't have a problem with it. But you're not coming back because once you go, you're out. Exactly. So and I think somebody else, another family member talked to her about it was like, oh, my goodness. Do you know how lucky you are that you're even having this opportunity to get this and that? And I think she has like a different understanding of it now. And now she's working toward it, because if you really want to not live home, work on not living home. Right. You know, but why jump out somewhere to be struggling? Why yeah. do that? Oh, right. But, but, yeah. but remember, you can't live for free. You cannot um, live for free. Right. You cannot. So I think that those are, you know, just some, like you said, some short term things that people can do to try and aid in the rising cost of things. This and uh, like I said, unprecedented inflation that we are going through. Because I don't, I, when I think back to it in my years of living, I don't know if we ever seen anything quite like this so fast. We've seen it, obviously. Mm -hmm. I remember gas was a dollar, uh, five cents or something like that. But a uh, uh, dollar five cents, not five cents. I ain't that damn old. Right. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> and you see what it is today. So we again, we right. know that things continue to rise. But um, the way in which they are rising. It's special out there. Like I work from home and I'm so glad. And like all I keep thinking is next week I have to go to a training and it's in like, um, I think, Middlesex County. And, you know, everybody was like, mm -hmm. 
you know, because we come from all over the state. And they was like, oh, you know, then make sure you fill out your mileage form. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Then I, now I can come. Yes. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So try to do as much as you can to battle the rising causes. And if you, if any of you out there have any tips that we can take, or that we can give to other people and we can talk about it on the podcast if you have anything to add into the list that we just uh said because we gave you a few things let us know you know yes you would be very interested i'm definitely interested because i can't even afford my water so i i'm interested in how i can make uh my money grow yes don't let maya be dehydrated y'all <laughs> 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 Please, do you have any uh, personal journals for this week? I don't have a personal journal this week because my week was so wonderful. Um, I, I will just say this: um, I listen to this song every morning. It's it's my alarm, and the song is by Tone Tone. Mm -hmm. I think it's pronounced Tone, but it has the X. Uh, God is not forgotten. And he says, just keep on believing, just keep on praying. God is not forgot. And that it is so true. And whatever you're seeking him for, he has not forgot. You just keep on because it will, it will happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was like, that was a sound like I was about to break out in the song. Um <laughs> that you don't have to have a personal journal for this week. That was something awesome. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that my personal journal for this week is to continue to live. And what I mean by that is over the last couple of years, because of what's been going on with the bid, I have been, and I'll use the word scared to continue to live, mm -hmm. you know, like just going out and doing things and you, you know, like the normalcy. And we know that we, can't get back to 100% normal, nothing will ever be the same, right? right? But just even continuing to try to do anything, I'm like, I don't know. You want to go? I don't know. You want to? <laughs> I don't know. You know, <laughs> and being out this weekend and going to the concert and going to the comedy show, it just gave me, you know, like I, when I first was in, I was like, mm, nervous, like, oh my God, I'm the wrong these people but then and uh, you know a little person came up in my head and was like girl continue to live like you have to life's right. very short you know we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and we just have to continue to push through and live and get away from fear so that's my personal journal just uh to continue to live and push fear to the side and you know just enjoy life all right all right. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here for the week. Don't forget, we drop a new episode every Monday. Uh, you can follow us on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at We Did That Shit Podcast. Don't forget to follow me on my personal Twitter. It's my my 13 It's M-Y-M-Y-1-3. And I'm at the B Amina. That's B-I-B-B-I-A-M-I-N-A. -B -B -I -I all right. And we'll see you guys next week. Remember, be great this week. Do that shit. I love you, Maya. Love you too. <laughs>